Christ, by the grace of God, now we are in the last Sunday of this year. Let's see what God is going to reveal through my heart. Uh, I request uh, dear Madam Sharon to pray for the message, please. Yeah, the mic is behind you. Just pray for the message that God would speak to through me. Abba Father, we are gathered here to listen to your voice. Yes. And we want to thank you that Pastor Nathan is your mouthpiece. He is going to speak words from your word, your heartbeat. And those words are spirit and life. Yes. And that's those words, they are going to yes. come forth, bring healing, restoration, and miracles in our lives. And we now commit this time into your hands. We pray for your anointing. Yes, your anointing to flow, flow through your servant, Pastor Nathan. Angels of God, surround this place. We pray for open heavens above, above this place, this sanctuary. We thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you take over. In your precious name we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for the prayer, dear man. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible says in Psalm 119 and verse 18, David says in this way, Lord, open my heart that I would see wondrous things in your law. This evening, I'm just not sharing with you any theology, but I'm going to reveal the heart of God. I'm going to reveal the heart of God. Can I have the first slide, please? As a disciple of Christ, how do we know that we have fulfilled God's plan and purpose for the year 2019? That is the first point. And the second point is how to know that we are progressing in our spiritual life. Dear church, we all know when our children study in the school or in the college, at the end of every year, we expect their promotion. If the children are promoted to the next standard, obviously, there's so much of happiness and joy in the heart of the parents. And when the children fail in their school, and when they're not promoted to the next standard, it's a great disappointment and sorrow in the heart of the parents. It is the same with our Heavenly Father. As years pass by, God expects our spiritual progress. And He sees that we are developing a personal relation with Him. What is the difference between God in the Old Testament and in the New Testament? What I observed was, in the Old Testament, all the people worship God with fear, but not out of love. You know, if they do any mistake, there was a law of God where they could be punished. So out of fear, they worship God and never God revealed himself as father towards the Israelites. But in New Testament, through Jesus Christ, through his blood, we have become one of his family. Praise God. Hallelujah. And now through Jesus, God the Father is our Father. And now we worship Lord not out of fear, but out of love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I see the next slide please? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, At that time the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom 
of heaven. Dear church, out there in the Christ tender, we see many preachers preaching about the outward works of Jesus Christ, but there are very few preachers who preach about the inner life of Jesus Christ. Today, I'm going to reveal to you the heart of God. In the secular world, in whatever job we are, you know there is a greatest achievement and a great position in the organization where we are working. You know, as years pass by, we want to pro progress and we want to reach the high position in the organization. You know, the Bible says we can get great position in heaven. Do you know or not? I do not know. But as I read the Bible, I came to know there are levels of positions in heaven. There are few people who are going to be great in the kingdom of God. And there are few people who are going to be least in the kingdom of God. The Bible references Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19. We see people who are least in the kingdom of God. And there is a reason there why they are called least in the kingdom of God. Matthew 5 and verse 19. Whoever therefore, whoever therefore breaks one of the least breaks one of the least of these commandments of these commandments and teaches men so and teaches men so shall be least in the kingdom of heaven. Shall we underline the word? Shall be least in the kingdom of God, not for a day, not for a week, not for a month, not for a year, not for ten years or hundred years. It's for the whole eternity. We are going to be least in the kingdom of God. How sad it is. How sad it is. There is no testimony in our life when we cross into eternity. You know, in my life, I always think, you know, at the end of my life, when I pass into the glory, all the apostles should come towards me and they should tell me, oh, many a times Jesus spoke about you, about you to us. Jesus was showing your life, you know. That is a great testimony what we have to carry. Not only going to heaven, but we should be great in heaven. So the disciples, they were asking Jesus Christ, we have 12 disciples here working with you. Just tell us who is great in us. So they were so anxious, you know, waiting to listen to the answer of Jesus Christ. And Jesus was telling, then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children. Dear church, we are all converted from our sinful ways through the baptism. But, but God requires from us another thing after we come into the Christian faith. That is, year by year, we have to become like little children in what? Not in our mind, but in our heart. Amen. Can I have the next slide, please? I think Rajvin looked like that child when he was small. <laughs> Be like a little child is the subject what I have in my heart, dear church. Have you ever listened a sermon on that? Have you ever listened a sermon on that? No. Let's see what God is going to reveal to the church this evening. Can I have the next slide, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 20 says, Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children in regard to evil beef infants, but in your thinking be adults. What we understand from the verses, in our thinking we should be adults and mature, but in our heart, we should be child. Towards evil, we should be like infants as if we know nothing about evil. But in our mind, in our thinking, we should be mature adults. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 says, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. God wants us to be childlike in our nature not childish in our ways but childlike in our nature can i have the next slide please 
The leader in the kingdom of God is a little child. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fat lead together. And a little child shall lead them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In the world system. Who would be a leader? It might be for an organization or whatever it is. The clever, intelligent, smart, self-confident, proud are the leaders in the world system. But in God's system, it is the people who have the heart of child would be leaders. Praise God. Hallelujah. The values of earth are going to be completely Reverse. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I have the next slide, please? When we see the eyes of a three months baby, it is like closest to heaven you can see on this earth. But yet in the sinful world, we all have lost the heavenliness of our mind and heart. The Bible says in Matthew 18, 3, Assuredly, I say to you, Unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, year by year, God wants us to become childlike in our nature. And I'm going to tell you few things about the child and let us examine our life in the light of the world. You know, there is no backsliding in the academic education of a student. When you see in a school, you know, if a student failed in a class, he would remain in the same class. If he has failed in the fourth class, he remains in the fourth class. There is no backsliding in the life of a student. But sad thing is, there is backsliding in the life of a believer. From fourth standard, there is a possibility to go back to the first, stand, first standard in a spiritual life. There is no backsliding in the life of a student, but there is backsliding in our life. And God wants year by year that we need to be transformed into the likeness of child. Now, to know whether we have succeeded or we are progressing, we need to know who is great in the kingdom of heaven. Obviously, it is Lord Jesus Christ who is great in the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says, we need to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. The church is the place where pastors and men of God transform the life of the believers into the likeness of Christ. And this is the missing message in many churches around the world. Miracles, healings, Prophecies, signs and wonders are there, but the inner truth is missing. The reason why the church is formed is, when people come into the church, they need to be transformed in their inner life into the image of Christ. Can, can anyone read from Gal Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19 please? Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. My little children, my little children, for whom I labor, for whom I labor in birth again, in birth again, until Christ is formed in you. Until Christ is formed in you. You could see the burden of Apostle Paul towards every church. His burden was not to earn money, not to live in luxury, not thinking about how to buy a Mercedes Benz or Audi car, but it's his burden was, you know. The church has to, be, has to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And where this work has started, the devil is so afraid of this work. Why you know? Until unless the church is not prepared as a bride, Christ would not come. To delay the second coming of Christ, the devil will not allow this inner transformation in church. So we need to just think about it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I have the next slide please? 
The wonderful message of the gospel is this, not only your sins are forgiven, but you can again become a child. How many of you think about your childhood memories? No responsibilities, nothing. Happily, we were dependent upon our parents. Whatever we asked, you know, they pampered and they gave us. You know, sometimes we just think, you know, to go back to the childhood. You know, God even wants us in our heart to be transformed as children. That is only possible through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Last Sunday, I told you about inner righteousness and outer righteousness. The law could, make, could not fulfill the righteousness of God. The law was like a scissor. Whenever a bad fruit sprouted out the branch, it just cut at the bad fruit. But till the sinful root was there in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus came to lay the axe at the root of sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we need the gift of the Holy Spirit for this inner transformation to become as Christ. Then there are many couples sitting here. Now, I ask the wives who are sitting here, how much you have seen Christ in your husband? Are they progressing? Yeah. Are they progressing? Let's be happy about it that they are progressing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even God sees how much we are transformed into His likeness. When God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, in our image, in our likeness. But when we see in Genesis chapter 5, 4, Adam bore a child in his likeness, in his image. The plan of God was through Adam and Eve, you know, God expected that there would be godly offspring through their family. Godly offspring through their family. But they lost the glory of God and they bore sinful generation from them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's see the next slide. What it means to be a little child, the first thing is humility. Every child helplessly depends on their parents. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, have you seen a one-year-old child managing himself or herself? <laughs> For food, mommy, food, daddy, food, whenever they feel hungry. When they want milk, Mummy or daddy? When they just want to stand, mummy and daddy. Whatever they need, they just stretch their hands towards their parents. The child selflessly depends on their parents. Praise God, hallelujah. Humility means life of dependence on God continually. In the initial days of a conversion, when we came, like when we were baptized, we were so eager to read the word of God. We were so eager to listen to the voice of God. We were so eager to pray to God. We were so eager to worship the Lord. But now, are you carrying the same zeal now? Or you have progressed much more, having more zeal to spend much time with the word of God? To spend much time in prayer. Whatever plans and whatever decisions you were making in your life. Are you putting God first in that? Seeking His will or not is my question. In the initial days we were so dependent on God. For every decision you know. Wherever we are going. Wherever we are working. Whenever we started a day. We were so dependent on God. But by years passed by. We became self-dependent. The position of God in the initial days of our spiritual life and now has become so far, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. At the end of the year, we need to just think how much we are depending on God as a child selflessly. Lord, I can't move with you. Lord, I can't make any decision without you. Lord, I need your help in every circumstance of my life. 
Lord, with my wisdom and with my knowledge, I can't do my work. I need you, Lord. Are we having the child of a heart? You know, the child always stretches his or her hands towards the parents to do anything when they are in their childhood. God expects, ex expects us to selflessly depend upon him. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and 6, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But why we are anxious? Because we are not like child. When a father promises a child, my dear son, when you're promoted from this fifth standard to sixth standard, I am going to buy a bicycle to you. The child goes to the school and tells to every student in his class what a faith he's having towards his father. Can we tell when we lose our job, when our business go down, you know, when our finances go down, can we just in faith, can we make a good confession like the small child? He has not received the bicycle yet. But one word from the mouth of the father, one assurance, he expressed his faith telling it to all the students in the class. Would the child sit after a few days and think, whether my father would buy me a bicycle or not, he might change his mind, I think. Oh, he's having a lot of financial responsibilities. He never thinks like that. No doubt in his heart. He's so sure that when a father, when his father promises him, certainly he will buy the bicycle. So God seeks such kind of dependence and faith upon him. So now, if you are anxious in your life about anything, it might be job or your work, it means that you are not like a child. Lord, make me helplessly depend on you for everything in the coming year 2020. Not after losing my money, time and resources, but before I start any work in the coming year, let me put you first. Let me seek you with my heart, let me understand your will and purpose for my life. In whatever stream of work you are, I ask you to prepare yourself in prayer, seeking the will of God for the coming year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So humility is depending upon God selflessly. Praise God. Hallelujah. The second thing is children are helpless. If you hit a child, they cannot defend themselves. Little children cannot retaliate. They are helpless. When you go to a six months old child, and when you just pinch the child, will they react and hit you? <laughs> What's the next thought? They would get in their mind, you know. They would see for their parents to come. They would see for their parents to come. If a child is one or two years old, what would the child do when the father comes to the child? Ah, 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 something they would try to express, you know. But they won't react, retaliate. They won't hit. Praise God. Hallelujah. In this civilized world, people may not pinch us or hit us with their hand, but they would hit us with their words. Now what is our reaction when people speak against us? People speak some bad things behind us. Are we just relying and leaving it to God or we are trying to retaliate or argue with them? Are we trying to defend ourselves? You know, whenever you try to argue and you defend yourself, God is not going to stand with you. Can anybody read uh, from Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 35? 32 and verse 35. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 35. Uh, Pastor can read from Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30. Uh, the Ven other verse. Yeah. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. Pastor, just read Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30. My Bible is all torn <laughs> So, the Bible, God says, vengeance is mine. 
as the children of God, if anyone stand against us, it is God who is going to defend us. You know, we have good lawyers over here. What they are doing, you know, they are advocates to defend us in the court of law. The same way God would defend us when we give the case into the hands of God without arguing and without going into verbal conversation, verbal accusation with them. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if God has to stand with us, we should be quiet, not retaliating, not arguing with the people, not trying to defend ourselves. You know, as I said to you, when we hit a small child, can't do anything. He is helpless. He is waiting for daddy. You know, sometimes when the parents come to the little child, you know, they try to express it. And when the person who has hit that little child, when that person comes to the little child, he would tell, hit him, hit him, hit him. If they are three or four years old, what they would say? Daddy, hit him. Mommy, hit him. But they, would, they can't hit the person who has uh, uh, just slapped them or just pinched them. Praise God, hallelujah. So God wants us in the coming year, whatever negative consequences we face from the people around us, just leave the case into the hands of God. Don't try to defend yourself. Amen. If anyone accuses a child, he will not justify. Pharisees justify themselves. Child will not make any excuses. Praise God. Hallelujah. So don't fight with the people. The revelation what God gave me was when I was praying for God's authority and power, God told me, don't fight with the people verbally. Don't try to defend yourself. If you want authority and power over the evil forces, you should die to yourself and be quiet in every situation of your life. Don't try to defend yourself. Don't go into verbal conversation with them in a heated conversation. Just leave it into my hand. So when we are quiet, God stands with us and he would defend us. But when we try to self-justify ourselves, going and just uh, speaking to them, it's good for nothing. The next slide, please. Children don't have pretense. Children don't have pretense. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I saw in an automobile company, we aim for zero defect. You know, the manufacturers were aiming for a zero defect car. How much more the creator, our heavenly father, sees that we are without defect in our inner life. Without any weakness, without any sin, and without any pretense. Shall I ask you one question? What is the sin Jesus hated the most? It is hypocrisy. We see in Matthew chapter 23, six times, Vow to you Pharisees, vow to you Pharisees. Because they were pretending to be spiritual when they are not spiritual in their inner life. Pretending to be righteous, but inwardly they were unrighteous. God hates pretense, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 31. Can anybody read for me please? Matthew chapter 21 and verse 31. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him the first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. Tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before the Pharisees. Why? Because when it came to sin, they humbly, honestly accepted it. They did not pretend like the Pharisees. So God seeks inward righteousness in us. At the end of the year, if there is any hidden sin in our life, let us confess it. Might be your husband doesn't know about it. Might be your wife doesn't know about it. If you are young children, might be your parents does not know about it. But God knows the secret faults of our life. And God hates pretense. Way back, I think it's three, before three years, I brought a good camcorder to record my preaching. 
and to just post it on Facebook. When I brought the camcorder, I was praying to God for the anointing. But God did not move my heart to telecast it on Facebook. I was asking God, God, why you're not letting me to telecast it on Facebook? I need your anointing power, but I'm not feeling your power. What God said was, for six months, you sit alone and you just watch your own sermons. Every Sunday, whatever I preach, I record it by myself. And in that week, whenever I had free time, I just watch my sermons. And there are many things what I was preaching, what I was not practicing. And whenever I just heard what I was telling, what I was not practicing, the Holy Spirit moved my heart to just kneel down and repent for it and ask for His grace to practice that in my life. I did it for six months. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the initial days of my preaching ministry, I was very busy preaching here and there, visiting many churches and many places. There was a point where the Holy Spirit asked me, is your inner life corresponding with your outer preaching? No. I was having in my heart a lust to preach to others and to win their souls. I was not having a heart really to help them, you know, to win souls for God, uh, to see inner transformation in them. I was just preaching to win their souls with my eloquency, with my Bible knowledge and everything. Then I said, Lord, yes, there is pretense in my heart. I'm not having a true burden. So please forgive me. The brothers and sisters in Christ, spiritual growth is not acquiring more knowledge, but becoming like little child. If a little child commits any mistake, when you ask the little child, Hey, what you have done? I know about it. Why you have taken that? No word they will speak. Would they differ? They shut their mouth, you know. No pretense at all. Can anybody read John chapter 1 and verse 47 for me? John chapter 1 and 47 for me. As the Holy Spirit is reminding me this verse from the Bible. Jesus saw Nathaniel. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him. Coming toward him. And said to him. And said to him. Behold. Behold. An Israelite indeed. An Israelite indeed. In whom is no who, deceit. There is no deceit. Pretense and guile. Would God say at the end of the year, seeing our life, there is no pretense in your life, there is no deceit in your life, there is no guile in our life. Would God can give the same testimony towards our life or not? We need to just think at the end of this year. Praise God. Hallelujah. God seeks truth in our inner inward parts. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Willingness to be known as we are. We don't pray much in the secret, but we seem to be so prayerful in the outside. We don't read the Bible much in secret, but we seem to be as if we have read many verses, many chapters in the Bible. You know, when we, whenever we ask a person who is working in the organization, in the secular world, I am telling, how much, is, how much is your salary when we ask them? If the salary is 1500 SGD, what they would tell you, you know, 3000. Certainly, they will not tell that it is 1500. The man's fallen nature is to always tell something more than what we are. What is your position in the organization? He might be an executive, but he would say I'm a manager. <laughs> man's fallen nature is like that. Always pretense. Always we try to show more. We always think that people should have high thoughts about us. When I came into full-time ministry, I had in my mind a thought, God, I'm not bothered what 730 crore people think about me in this world, but I'm always thinking what you are thinking about me. Praise God, hallelujah. In the initial days of my ministry, when I was praying for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the brothers and sisters in Christ, the Holy Spirit, remind a pretense in me. I lied to my wife before marriage. The Holy Spirit convicted and told me, if I 
should anoint you. Go to your wife, accept your fall. It was not a small lie. It was a very big lie. I prayed for two days to go and just reveal it to her. After prayer, I went after two days and I just told her. She cried for two days after listening to that. I have paid a price when I came into the ministry. It's not so easy. I have to humble my myself and I just bow my head for four days after revealing that. God killed myself in that way. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many secrets as husbands we hide from our wives? How many secrets wives hide from the husbands? A lot of pretense, right? And there not be any pretense in the end of this year. God is not angry with our sinfulness, but he's so angry when we honestly not confess about it. The next slide. Children, don't keep any grudges. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18, please. Can anybody read? Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18. Uh, Pastor would be reading from uh, Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 22. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 22 in the meantime. You shall not take vengeance. You shall not take vengeance. Nor bear any grudge. Nor bear any grudge. Against the children of your people. Against the children of your people. Thank you, brother. When you pinch a little child today, and when you come back on the next day, what would be the reaction of the six months old child or one year of old one year old child? You just tell me. You pinch this day, you hurt him. And come the next day. No remembrance. Nothing in their mind. Isn't it right or not? Do they remember that you have pinched them? Nothing they would remember. You may harm them, you may pinch them, you may cause them pain, but when you come the next day, they smile at you. Nothing in remembrance. When people hurt us, when we came to know that this guy, this woman is speaking something bad about me. When we face them, we go from this way. <laughs> Isn't it right? Yes. It may be in the organization too. When we face the people who speak against us, who are working against us, can we go to them and say, hello, good morning, hello, praise the Lord. Do we say no? We go from somewhere. Praise God, hallelujah. Children never hold grudge in their heart. The brothers and sisters in Christ, do you still remember the evil somebody did not, uh, did not only yesterday, but 10 years ago? Oh my goodness. We still remember, right? We have grudge about what people have done 10 years back, 5 years back, carrying unnecessary load year after year. Carrying unnecessary load year after year. God cannot bless a bitter heart person. Amen. No, no, no. Just read Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15, please. As the Holy Spirit is reminding me. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Looking carefully, looking carefully, lest anyone fall. Lest anyone fall. Short of the grace of God. Of the grace of God, lest anyone root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. Whenever bitterness springs up in our heart, we would never get the grace of God. It's not murder. It's not adultery. What devil provokes us? Little bit of hatred, little bit of grudge causes bitter root to sprout out in your heart and you can't receive the blessing of God in your life. Might be there are some bitter roots in your heart towards some people. Don't carry it to the next year. Be filled with the grace of God. Hallelujah. You discover, you discover that as a husband or wife, when they dispute, oh, a lot of memories come back to you accusing each other. <laughs> lot of memories come back to accuse each other. The devil reminds you if the devil reminds you, reject it. Don't yield your will to think about the bad memory. The brothers and sisters in Christ, God cannot erase our bad memories from our mind. But how to overcome it?
don't yield your ill your thoughts towards that memory what satan is reminding you god cannot erase the bad memories in our life whenever satan brings that into our mind what we should do and make my thoughts obedient to christ we should say praise god hallelujah so never husband and wife should accuse each other you know when something comes you know usually sometimes my wife corrects me my wife corrects me but if i am not having true humility in my heart what i would think ah what you would tell what you would tell me ah huh? what you would tell me you think i don't know about that i am so well experienced in that no need to give me advice a lot of stubbornness in husbands right whenever the wives try to correct them you know i am very weak in financial area whatever finances you know whatever decisions we have to make together in finances i put my head down and humble myself in front of my wife <laughs> let i will be done in my finances <laughs> as husband are we having that humility in the area of life where you are weak you should exalt your wife in the way in the area where the husband is weak the wife has to exalt the husband praise god hallelujah i'm not th teaching you theology dear brothers and sisters i'm just revealing the heart of god so god does not condemn you for what you have in your memory it is our will to pick it up as we read in hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10 god not only forgives your sins it says he never remembers that even in isaiah chapter 43 verse 25 it is the it is Uh, it is the same thing what is written there i would forgive you and i will not remind your transgressions anymore but there are yet secret files in our hearts when times the time comes we bring it out you know accusing each other so let us forget all the bad things and bad memories of 2019 and don't carry these bad memories in 2020 next slide please children are teachable it's very important a deep revelation christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what's the width and length and depth and height to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god the brothers and sisters in christ christ love is four dimensional to get the knowledge of god the brothers and sisters in christ we seek some theological books we seek some bible commentaries but god teaches many lessons with the people around us every person in the body of christ is superior to me in some area every person is superior to you in some area if i am not good at worship i should exalt rajiv to worship if i am not good at preaching i should exalt dear pastor to preach there is something what we can learn from every believer in the church we are not super deluxe edition in the sight of god don't think like that everyone we have our own weaknesses an ordinary laborer is superior to us in some area plumbing if you have problem in a bathroom whom you would call obviously the plumber If the plumber comes there, if it is a small work, what we should do? We may have internet knowledge, computer knowledge, theological studies, PhDs, but yet coming to the plumbing, we should humble ourselves and ask the plumber why this wrong happened here, how to fix it. If we say I am a PhD, I am a managing director in an organization, I will not ask that person why it has happened. It is you who are going to lose. because if it is a small work when you just ask him you know it excites such kind of laborers when you ask some questions to them oh this great person is asking me about plumbing oh great great sir please come i will tell you what happened here he explains everything you know why this happened next time not to happen how you should take care how to fix it so next time when there is a problem no need to call the plumber you can fix it by yourself it may be an electrician If you know something about power and the circuits and everything, what we should do? If there is a problem, humble ourselves and get some knowledge from Him. Praise God! Hallelujah! 
So in the body of Christ, each and every believer is so valuable in the sight of God. There is something we can learn from each and every person in the Bible. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said, uh, Apostle Paul said, the church is the body of Christ. What is the small part which has no honor in our body? Please tell me. What is the small part which has no honor and anything? What is that? Nails. When there is itching on your body, what do you require? Nails. Even nails has a work to do in our body. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Even nails have a work to do in our body. So every person in the body of Christ has <laughs> some work to do. We have to value the next piece. I'm completing it. Sorry if I've taken much time. Children don't make critical judgment. Ah, oh, so judgmental. Many a times, you know, we come to God and say, God, for 10 minutes, I need your throne. Please get up there. We sit and we judge everyone. <laughs> How sad it is God waiting for us, standing beside us. Many a times, is it right? Children would not make critical judgments. But we make some critical judgments let we not have a judgmental attitude and heart in the coming year. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, from my personal experience, I judged a great man of God in my life. You know what happened? In Psalm 109 and verse 16 and 17, there is a uh, symptom of the curse written there. God showed me. I was having joint pains and bowel problems. Joint pains and bowel problems, gas problems. I used many medicines, but yet I could not get rid of that. When I was in fasting prayer, God told, you spoke bad about this man of God. You judged him. You sat on my throne judging that man of God. Now confess for your sin. I confess. I wept bitterly and I confess for that sin. Soon after that night, no joint pain, no bowel pain. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. We have made many judgments of people around us. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's ask forgiveness for judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. If God has to be merciful to you, we need to, merciful, to be merciful on other people. Praise God. Hallelujah. If God has to be strict on you, you should be strict on others. Next. Next. Children are not ambitious to seek money. Be ambitious to seek the things of heaven. The brothers and sisters in Christ, Luke chapter 16 and verse 13 says, you can't serve two masters. Amen. That is not Satan and God. It is mammon and God. All through, all through the Christendom, many preachers are preaching that you can love God and money. Money should be at our foot. The brothers and sisters in Christ, there are a lot of people who are working like Martha. It would just disappear like wood, hay and straw one day. Whatever you do for the glory of God, for the extension of your kingdom, God would judge the motive in your heart. Is it to seek glory from the people around you? Or is it truly for the glory of God or not? There are many Marthas around the Christendom, you know, working out with their own plans and purposes. But it is what? It is not what you do for Christ. It is what you allow Christ to do through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So have a good clarity about what God wants you to do in the year 2020. What God wants to accomplish through your life. Just think about it. Our cleverness and smartness will not lead people into God's kingdom. It is just giving information hallelujah all throughout the world in every church there are a lot of men of God with a lot of wisdom knowledge but they're not able to build the church what God is seeking for what they are building is Babylon you know what is Babylon you can love God and money what is true Jerusalem the church that Jesus builds is where we say Money is at our foot. We love God truly. You can't love God and money. 
Manish should be a servant in your life but not master. Money should work as you tell the money, but money should not speak to you and work through you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12 and verse 31, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, Seek ye my kingdom and my righteousness and everything will be added to your life. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's examine our life. Year by year, we are... Are we transformed into the likeness of Christ? Being like a child, not retaliating, not defending, not accusing, not having any grudge, selflessly depending upon God. Let us examine our life. Lord, in this coming year, make me helplessly to depend upon you. As I'm about to enter into your new year, through thy mercy and grace, let me not hold any grudge in my heart. Any grudge in my heart. Any wrong thoughts about any person in my life. There are few bitter roots in my heart. Let's humble ourselves. There's a woman here. The Spirit of the Lord reveals to me. Not speaking to your relatives. You have bitter root in your heart towards your relatives. Unless this bitter root is plucked out from your heart. You can't receive the blessing of God. Let's examine our heart. Let us be childlike, not childish, but childlike in nature. We are stopped speaking with few people in your relatives. In the church, you might have stopped speaking to few people. You have bitter roots in your heart. Lord, every bitter root, peace and word. I want to be like a child. I want to be like Jesus Christ. Let the aroma of Christ spread through me wherever I go in the coming year, Lord. Let Christ be manifested through my life wherever I go, Lord. In my speech, in my deeds, in my work, let Christ be revealed through my life. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. Amen.